In a previous, in a previous video, video, we have seen the informal idea of push-down automata. This video gets a bit more formal, and this is about the formal definition. And we start right with the formal definition of a push-down automaton. And a push-down automaton is simply a structure quite similar to the finite automata we already know. Very similar to the finite automata, we have a, a finite set of states, Q. We also have an input alphabet from which the input symbols are taken. We have uh, one state that is the initial state. And we have a set of uh, final or accepting states. So this is quite similar to the um, NFAs that we already know, or the DFAs. So this is something we know. However, there are also new parts. And new parts are, of course, the stack alphabet. We also have a finite stack alphabet, gamma. And we have some initial element that is on the stack. And the transition function looks a bit dif uh, different from what we know from uh, the finite automata. At the first glance, this transition function might look frightening. However, once you have made your way through this uh, formal definition, it's actually quite easy. So let's have a look at the parts. The first part here is the set of states Q in the definition. So for some specific state Q, this is the current state. Um, this transition function considers the current state. This is Q. The second part the uh, transition function considers is something from the input. So we can either take a symbol from the input, from the input alphabet, therefore, uh, it's sigma, so you can either read a symbol A from the input or perform uh, an epsilon transition by not reading an input. That's the second part. Third part of the definition is that we actually read something from the stack. And this is exactly one letter. So we take one symbol from the stack and this one is popped. Um, and the interesting part is that this pop operation is actually mandatory. There's no star here or something, so we actually have to take one symbol. This cannot be the empty word. And this function yields a set because we have non-deterministic um, PDAs. Uh, there's not only one possible successor, there might be more. So we end up with a, with a uh, set of uh, possible um, successors. So we have this, um, um, so we have actually the power set here, that's the P. Now, mm, each possible transition might lead to, you know, or in this uh, transition, this leads to a new state, the successor state, this is Q prime, and we push something on the stack. So we take something from gamma star. And this is actually some, some letters that we push on the stack. That's the last part of the definition. However, note that this can be the empty word because here we have a star in the, uh, in the star closure. Uh, the, the empty word is, uh, is inside, so we might actually push not, nothing back on the stack. So the idea is that if we are in a current state, we might either read a symbol from the input or not, if it's an epsilon transition, but we actually have to pop a symbol from the stack. Then from this information, we determine a possible successor state. We change to this state and replace uh, or push uh, something onto the stack that replaces the, uh, the, the part that we have popped from the stack. So that's actually the idea of this uh, transition function. Now we want to um, describe how um, PDA works. And in order to do so, we need a, 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 a description, snaps, a snapshot, so to say, of the, of the whole thing. So what, what you see here, this is something we would like to, uh, to describe. 
and this is actually called an instantaneous description. So we would like to uh, describe what what this uh, PDA looks like at a certain point of time during during this uh, his computation. We can of course represent this instantaneous description by uh, using some kind of graphical notation like this one here. Here in this notation we know that the um, PDA is in state Q1. We know that uh, it has read two A's and there are still two B's to come. And uh, we know that on the stack we have uh, at the bottom the Z0 and then two A's on top. So we have all the information we might need and we, we might want. However, drawing a picture for each of these uh, instantaneous descriptions is a lot of work. So we need something simpler. And the idea is that the important information is actually, first thing is we need to know the state. This PDA is in state Q1, so we somehow have to um, write down Q1 in our instantaneous description. The second part is the rest of the input that's still to come. In our case, two Bs, so that's the second part we put in our instantaneous description. And finally, we have to know the stack because the, the stack determines whether the, the automaton will accept in the end or not. So we, we have to know the stack, the current stack, and that's the third part of our instantaneous description. So far the idea, so we simply uh, put the state, the rest of the input and the stack together in one structure and call this instantaneous description to take a kind of snapshot of this automaton during its computation. And this can also be formalized, and this is formalized in this definition. The definition just says that an instantaneous description contains the state, the rest of the input, and uh, the stack. That's the idea. Now that we have the idea of the ID of the instantaneous description, we can use these IDs to define how a PDA works. So this is what we do here. Uh, here we define how it works. And to this end, we define a relation, and this relation is a move relation, and it is usually denoted by this funny turnstile symbol here. So this one here denotes a move of the PDA, and the symbol here is a turnstile. And there are two possible kinds of moves. The first move actually reads something from the input. So if we have an ID like this one here, where the next uh, symbol is A1 and we are in current state Q and the stack top is um, A1, the capital A1, then we have to check the transition um, function, what, what kind of uh, transitions po are possible. And if we can uh, take a transition that leads us to Q prime and replaces the A1 by B1 to Bm, then we end up uh, using, uh, we, we end up with this ID because we have changed the state from Q to Q prime. We have consumed the A1 from the input, so it's gone. And we have replaced the A1 by B1 to Bm, so this one here, and it goes, it continues with A2. Beware at this point that B1 to Bm can actually be the empty word. So this one here could be the empty word, in which case we would simply start with the uh, A2 here. An alternative is uh, a move that does not consume something from the input. So if we have the same ID, but if we take an epsilon transition, if the automaton allows it to take an epsilon transition, that leads us to Q prime, then we end up in this ID here. Here we have uh, changed from Q to Q prime, same as above. We did not consume anything from the input. So here the next uh, symbol is A1 and here it's still A1. And we have replaced this A1, the first letter on top of the stack. So the, uh, the stack top is the leftmost letter in our notation. So we have replaced this A1 by B1 to Bm and the rest remains the same. And this is then uh, how the IDs change if we take an epsilon transition. Here in this part here, 
we we take a, a transition that consumes uh, the input and here we uh, take an epsilon transition. Usually we are not only interested in one step but we would like to know uh, which uh, IDs are reachable so we use a common notation with the star here just to denote that we can reach an ID this one here from this ID if it can be reached in a finite number of steps. So this star here just means reachable in a finite number of steps, which can also be zero. And having this notation, we can formally define the accepted language. And there are two common kinds of uh, definitions for the acceptance. The first one that's very similar to the finite automata, this is acceptance by final state. So we uh, take an, uh, a PDA, P, and say this PDA accepts the word W by final state if, and only if, this one here means if and only if, we have an ID, an, in an initial ID, uh, in which we are in the initial state, Q. The word is W, we have to uh, read the whole word W, and the initial um, stack, just contains z0. z0 was defined to be the initial stack symbol. So this one's on the stack. And starting with this ID, we can reach an ID, this one here, in a finite number of steps, such that we end up in a state qf, and qf should be a final state. The input is consumed completely. So from this w here, we have consumed it completely and, sim uh, and have uh, only the epsilon left empty here and we have something on the stack we don't care so some alpha on the stack so this means we accept a word by final state if the PDA can make a sequence of moves consuming the whole input and ending in a final state and this is the definition for one word and of course it accepts to the definition of the accepted language and we simply say that the accepted language by final state is the language of all the words that are accepted by final state. Another common alternative is the acceptance by empty stack. We will only mention it here in this course but we will not actually work with this definition a lot. And the idea is simple. This definition also starts with the PDA and, we, and says that, accepts, uh, that the PDA accepts a word W by empty stack if, and now we start with the same ID as before, so initially we are in a state Q0, the, the word is W, the one we would like to accept, and initially we have Z0 uh, in the stack as the topmost element, and then we have a sequence of moves that leads us to some state q. Here we don't care which state we are in, but what we care about is that we consumed the whole input, so the second part must be epsilon, and the third part as well, so that the stack is empty. So the idea is that we accept a word if the PDA can make a sequence of moves that consumes again the whole input and ends up with an empty stack. Here you have to note that from the definition, if you take a close look at the definition, the PDA cannot make any move once the stack is empty. Because in the definition, we always have to take one letter from the stack. So if it's empty, the, uh, the PDA cannot make any moves anyway. So that's the idea for acceptance by empty, uh, empty stack. Just consume the whole word, word and end up with an empty stack. And this leads to the definition of the language accepted by empty stack and this is the set of all words that's accepted by empty stack. Here we are uh, denoted by n p which is similar to null so the, the, the stack is empty. And just at a side no uh, as a side note both uh, acceptance conditions can be uh, converted into each other. If you have a uh, PDA accepting by final state, you can convert it in a uh, PDA accepting by empty state and vice versa. So in this video, we have formally defined what a PDA is, how it works and what the accepted languages are.